Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Um, this time I'll be covering the gravity block. Um, oh, where's it gone? There we go, not the shipyard. Yep, there we go. Gravity unit. I keep calling it a gravity block. So, um, yeah, if I say gravity block, I, I mean this, the gravity unit. Now, if I spring up my hot bar, which I already got it there, I'm going to cover a few examples, just basically used in the gravity block itself. Anyone who's gone through the start of the fresh game before would have, would have encountered this sort of system when it got you to walk upside down in different corridors and B0G. Um, yeah, this is essentially just showing how to put down that block, um, highlighting some of its quirks, and then a, a few interesting uh, ways of using it. So an airlock here, um, a little uh, UFO for a, like a tracked beam effect, but um, they, they work in their very specific ways, but it, it should be entertaining enough. Um, so, uh, you know, without further messing about, let's uh, crack on. So here we have the actual sort of gravity unit, gravity block. You've got a nice big arrow saying which way is down. So you press R a few times on a surface and left click and put it down. Now, if you have got the gravity block um, highlighted, you'll see these little blue arrows and sort of shapes appearing around you. And this denotes the area of effect for this gravity block. Right now it's switched on. If I look around, you can see a few more examples. And in the distance there, if I move out the field, you can see arrows moving slowly down on some of the builds I've got over there. So with a gravity block, gravity unit on a ship, as you fly out of this uh, ring area, which has its own gravity, uh, when you're close to it, then you'll be pulled along with that gravity field. So it's, it's quite, quite handy if um, you don't want to go flying to the back of your ship or a passenger flying to the back of the ship as soon as you go to hyperspeed. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what this area is. If we go up to the block, it should say F, no system linked. You press F and you get a nice little menu similar to the shipyard block. But there are differences. So while these values here correspond to X, Y and Z, sort of left and right, up and down, forward and back, um, on the shipyard, they are slightly different. So this column here is, if you're standing facing the block, these two numbers represent the minimum and maximum uh, towards and away from the block. This one represents up and down. I'm reading my notes at the same time because I keep forgetting. And then this final column means left and right from, from your current position. This, on the other hand, as you can see, it's got a one there denoting downward strength. But that's sitting in what, were, what I would normally call the Z column. Whereas everything else so far in terms of height has always been that column. So when you come to playing of it, just experiment until... Um, until you get the, the pretty arrows pointing in the right direction. So at this moment, we just want downwards. Well, at the moment, yeah, downwards, but we're going to change it. So I've got some preset numbers here. So I'll change them and we'll see what happens. So if I set minimum to zero, which means it'll be on this block itself, and then set to one. Now, if I step out, you can see we've now got a, a narrower, narrower area of effect, and that is one block away and on zero over there. Now, my aim is I'm gonna set up something so that I can walk towards that platform. It's gonna pull me onto that platform, orientate me the right way, and then I can walk to the top. And then with a second uh, gravity unit, gravity block, I can then allow myself to walk upside down. Very much similar to, or exactly the same as you ex experience at, uh, at the beginning when you start up a fresh game. So let's change another column. So this time it's going to be height. I, for some reason I've got minus eight written down and four. So let's see what happens there. Now that's changed it back there and back there. So I think I've changed the height to the maximum up there. And I don't think I needed the minus eight. Let's actually just experiment, change that to zero. And we get that effect. So that's zero height. So it levels it off of the block. And it actually um, ties it to the large grid. So the the I'm trying to point my point at the finger uh, the screen of my finger then. But these plus signs represent the large block grid. Everything you do on this, even if as you can see it's uh, two small blocks high, 
um, the gravity field that you're defining is tied to the large block system. So this is set to zero mount, yeah, zero high. So that's something to be aware of, that the, the grid might be offset slightly. And you get a nice flickering effect as it's uh, sitting on ground level. To uh, prevent that, let's change up the mountains too, just so we don't see it. There we go. Now, that was the height, so it stops at the top of that platform there. But now we want it to only extend within this hazard area. So let's change these last ones. I've got written down minus three and minus four. And then we can see there, that nice little area is now corralled. So if I walk into that area, it should change my direction, but not at the moment, so because everything is pointing down. So I want to negate the current gravity field, which is on the on the ring we're at at the moment, and set to minus one. And even though I've explained those columns being away and towards, everything seems to be shifted across a little bit. So whatever you see on that column, just push it across that way to the right. So that is that column and we are going to do one. So that's going to push in the left direction. So you can see the arrows. It's a bit difficult to see on this light. You can see they're going at an angle. So if I make sure I am set to walking around, I can move to here and you can see that it's orientated me. I move off that so it doesn't show it. But now I'm nice and sideways. Now if I run, try and run off, there we go. I can escape that gravity field. Now what you can also have for fun, and there are some, uh, some of the starter example ships do this as well. You can link a switch to the, um, to the gravity block itself. Uh, so you can switch it on, gravity, you'll see a glow around the edge, the, the logo or the front will glow, and that will mean the gravity field is switched on. So I can switch that off, it'll slowly grow, grow dim, and you can just walk into this area and not be affected whatsoever. Now let's attach a second uh, ship, uh, sorry, um, uh, I was going to say shipyard block, gravity block. I'm going to keep the arrow facing downwards, even though I'm going to build one which should ne negate this gravity here. So put that on there, you can see it's defining a large gravity area there. I put in some presets I've written down, so zero and one for the away and towards. Then we're going to go two and three for the height. So that should be roughly where that top of that platform is. And then minus three to minus one. So that will be to the left. Now gravity, I'm just going to change. So that would essentially make it like zero gravity because I'm just cancelling out what the current area is. So I need to change that to two. So from there, we can see that's there. I've actually extended the platform, so I can actually change that to zero. And I actually need to set it to one, sorry. And you can see that it's extended out to there. So now, if I wire that all up as well. Doo -doo -doo. This, uh, I'm, I'm also currently on experimental, which means that when you hook a switches up, it updates the block um, to whatever the switch is. Currently, uh, on a normal branch, um, you won't get an update to the block until you've flipped the switch a few times. So that's something to be aware of if you notice that sort of different behavior. So those are switched off, turn them on. I've got some little um, switches there just to indicate for fun. So now, if I walk up to there, it'll change my orientation. And if I go over to here, it should get me upside down and this is where it just really makes makes your brain hurt really and yeah I'm now now some nice and ups and upside down um, one of the things you can use this for if you don't want to bother with elevators in your spaceships you can just have the corridors wrapping around and twisting and turning uh, to get to the different levels and um, it just sort of spits them out or um, if you want to do some sort of weird gravity elevator get something so it turns gravity upside down, you fly to the other end, step out, and that could just be really headachey, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I can just walk off the end, it flips me around, switch that off so I don't get caught up in it. And yeah, so that is just sort of setting up gravity blocks, just making sure to uh, 
take into account that downward arrow so that then whatever you put in here makes sense. Um, just remember those are all shifted across to the right compared to there and they are different from the shipyard block in it itself because normally shipyard block that's left and right up and down away and towards if I've remembered correctly. But uh, from what I've explained for the gravity unit here that's how it is forward and back up and down left and right. Now before I confuse myself too much I'll switch on to a few uh, few examples of um, some fun you can have. So with these gravity blocks here I've defined a short area representing this airlock and it fires out the back there so since I am calling an airlock you can probably guess what I'm aiming to do and so like in a lot of sci-fi films when someone's chucked out of the airlock like uh, like an aliens or uh, I don't know with the Gal Guardians of the Galaxy where they chuck all the crew members out in the second film um, yeah, so that's wired up. So if I push the button, doors open, and the gravity block switches on, and it fires that out. It also closes it again. But so you can see the potential there if you're doing multiplayer, and like you can see those two large uh, cargo areas on that ship there. I could set the gravity up in there to just chuck all the contents out if they're not secured down. And um, I suppose if you wanted to set up traps for people who are boarding your ship, you can just turn on the button whoosh off they go I mean if I demonstrate quickly this will this will get a bit dizzy if I turn that on chucks me out and I go over there ah yes something I was going to try and sort of mention a bit later but I've accidentally revealed it I had try tried to put gravity blocks onto uh, hinges so here we've got a rotator block and so its area is defined slightly overlapping and this is something that's on the experimental branch you can actually type in what angle you want the block to be at but stable branch is not in there yet but as you saw I rotated it and the gravity field is pointing that way but unfortunately at the moment um, it seems like uh, gravity blocks on a rotator or hinge don't seem to affect things I think they re reorientate the player but not necessarily actually do like of that cube and fire off to the distance because as you may have noticed I had tried to try to create a large cannon um, if I fly around to the back to the controls I had it so you could open up the back load in a ship or some sort of other entity uh, close it up and then you can even sort of alter the the angle as well with you with the the slider blocks and uh, yeah that would have been a lot of fun but unfortunately um, I, I've taken the the use of the gravity block past what it was originally intended for so uh, I am borderline breaking the game a little bit in terms of what you can do with it but uh, for something that did work which is acting the reverse of the airlock is what I've done with this one so you can just about see where the internal gravity is pointing down but then I've got another narrow one which is pulling up um, so you can already guess I'm trying to do a tractor beam so let's pop in this this by the way is uh, called the classic silver UFO um, it's on the Steam Workshop I'll provide a link below so fly on in push the good old button I like doing these little mechanicals so we've got here underneath a little chamber which can open up and close. I've got that on hot keys so I can jump into here, bring myself up and just generally on deck, on dock, deck, dock, hmm. right send those up. Now I can't show you what the gravity field looks like but it is extending out below so if I press tab cycle round, oops, so I can press one you can see the the doors opening. Now I've got down there I moved close to it. Now this is one of the issues where I sort of said where I'm slightly breaking it. At the moment you have to be close to the block uh, for it to affect you when it switches on. So if I press 2, uh, I've got a message there so I need to be a bit closer. Oh, it's going to annoy me now. Why is it? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It helps if I'm actually over the object. There we go. Right. There we go. Um, there's a bit of conflict because it's too big 
Let's see, will it work? Yeah, here we go. I've got a mag lock on, on the inside tied to a hotkey, so I've locked it. So I can then turn off the, the tractor beam, and now I've got this um, attached to my ship. Um, because I don't tend to do multiplayer that much, I'm not really an online multiplayer person. Um, I haven't really tested this with uh, player characters, but I'm pretty sure if the same way I w walked over that platform earlier, um, this would work with players as well. So if you wanted to kidnap uh, enemy faction players whenever that comes in, then yeah, that, that could be quite fun. And also because it is attached with a mag lock now, it's not going to do a lot of that horrible collision mess it was trying to do a minute ago. So you can fly somewhere else. Press three, it'll complain for a bit, and then it drops. Oops, sorry. Yeah, and then close that. And uh, yeah, well, a lot of fun to be had, really. And of course, this nice little UFO is quite uh, fun, to, fun to play with. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Flight of the Navigator, really. If anyone's uh, old enough to have seen that film. Right, let's uh, cut all power. Yeah, that's what happens if you don't exit properly. But it, sp it does spin like a hubcap quite well. So, yeah, that um, that's all I can sort of show you for now. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a pity the, uh, the cannon doesn't work. Because um, that could have... Uh, I was planning to fire some of my smaller spaceships with those larger ones to see if I could bounce them off them. But so far we've got the airlock whoosh effect and a very short range tractor beam that we can abuse the system with so um yeah if you if have fun if you manage to figure out something better than that or you just have fun using this system please let me know and any other ideas yeah comments and i'll try and build something work something out so yeah thank you for watching and uh see you in the next one